Right, awesomeness junkies, welcome back to Hustle is for Life Motivation. And as always, I am here to serve you guys. Today, I have a very, very, very special guest with me. Somebody that I really look up to. Somebody who I am a huge fan of. And uh, I'm sure that you would have uh, absolutely heard of her. If you have not heard of her, then this is for your chance to meet somebody absolutely incredible. Somebody who's had a massive impact on my life and somebody who um, I have been actually recommending to other people so they can go and uh, check out her material. She is somebody who comes from a massive place of value. She has a really big heart uh, and her knowledge is just at another dimension. Uh, today's guest actually is a marketing strategy consultant and a professional speaker and a frequent contributor to Harvard uh, Business Review. Forbes and entrepreneur. She is an adjunct professor of business administration at Duke University and is the author of top selling business books like Reinventing You, Stand Out and the new one that's just been released called Entrepreneurial You. Uh, she's actually uh, the New York Times um, uh, best selling author as well um, and she has been described as an expert at self reinvention and she is recognized as a branding expert by Associated Press Inc and Fortune. She is a marketing strategy consultant and a speaker for clients such as Google, Microsoft, Morgan Stanley, the Ford Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Yale University and the World Bank just to name a few. She's a former uh, presidential campaign spokeswoman her interviews and talks and her lectures are larger than life and are a gold mine for a keen air. She is just absolutely somebody incredible and needless to say, I'm a huge fan if you haven't already worked that out. And I'm very honored to welcome the brilliant and captivating Dory Clark on the show. Dory, thank you so much for being here. I'm really, really honored. Thank you, Talal. It's great to speak with you. Thanks for having me. No worries. I am really excited to actually have you here because, uh, like I said, I'm a huge fan. I actually originally came across you on my friend Jeff Wood's podcast, The Mentee. And since then, I just went up and signed up to your newsletter and checked out all your material everywhere. Uh, and I've been actually recommending other people that they go and check out your stuff as well. Uh, and it's absolutely incredible. So thank you so much for that. I am really excited to have you on the show and uh, I'm also really excited because you've just recently launched a new book called Entrepreneurial You. Um, I really want to kind of talk to you about the book specifically. We'll obviously go and divulge and, and talk about other things as well, but definitely about your new book because it's so exciting. You already have two best-selling books. Uh, which are absolutely incredible and I'll hardly recommend everybody who's watching this to go and check them out. Um, can you please maybe talk to us a little bit about what inspired you to actually write this book? What was your journey like up to writing this book? So I was interested in writing my new book, Entrepreneurial You, because as I was touring around and talking about my last book, Stand Out, yeah. um, that, that's a book about how do you become a recognized expert in your field? How do you really you know, stand out from the competition and get yourself noticed? That is, of course, really important in the modern marketplace. There's, there's a lot of, um, of competition out there, and you have to do something to make sure that you can be paid what you're worth. And a great starting point, a necessary starting point, yeah. is being recognized for your talents so that people are seeking you out specifically. But what I came to understand in talking to people is that being a recognized expert, while critically important, is not enough. Yeah. We still have so many talented professionals out there that are just having trouble getting paid what they're worth. That monetizing is something that is a very different skill as compared to being great at what you do. Yeah. And of the people that are already successful making money, well, a lot of times the way that they have managed to do that is by just working insane hours, trading time for dollars, yeah. and they are 
at their wits end. I wanted to write a book with Entrepreneurial You that really talked honestly about money, making money as an entrepreneur. How do you do it? What are the possible revenue streams that you could explore? How do the most successful entrepreneurs working today actually make their money? And to to really get real and transparent, talking about what people can expect to make and what might work for them. So that was my goal in, in doing the research and crafting Entrepreneurial You. Fantastic. And uh, you know what? I, it's not actually available in the UK yet, um, but I, I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to ordering the copy when it will be available. Um, I was able to download the sample of your book off Amazon. Um, and I must say, like the, the little bit that I did read just seemed absolutely incredible because you share so much information about how people can actually monetize. And it's, it's a step by step kind of, you know, process, a system that, that actually helps them uh, develop their idea on how they can monetize their expertise. So, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, again, I would highly recommend everybody to go and check that out. Um, the new book is called Entrepreneurial You. Thank you. And it should be available like any minute in the UK. I don't even know why it's not. I have to I have to go check into that. Right. At a minimum, I know, uh, I'm not sure when our interview is going to hit, but November 14th, I'm actually doing uh, an event in London uh, oh, wow. with Harvard Business Review. Fantastic. And so uh, and so I, ho- I hope everybody uh, who's listening <laughs> from the UK comes. You just converge on London and, and demand your copy. Uh, hopefully you can get it well before then as well. But, uh, but if you're free on the 14th, you can come hang with me. Yeah, no, that'll be lovely. Um, please, uh, please let us know where that would be, and I'll put all the information below in the description so people can go and check that out. Um, and uh, definitely, if I get a chance, I'm gonna make sure that I am uh, definitely there to meet you in person. It would be a real nice. Honor. Yes, absolutely. Um, now, just want to talk a little bit more about the the focus of the book. Now, it's really about helping people monetize their expertise, but. I know there's a lot of people out there who believe that, you know, whatever they know, they, they, they can't really monetize it. And, and even a bigger, uh, you know, majority of people who believe that don't really have any expertise. W- what do you have to say to those people? Yeah, so when people say, I'm not sure if I have any expertise or I don't know what my thing would be, yeah. I... I actually think that that in in some ways they're setting a little bit too high of a bar for themselves, right? Now, obviously, you have to have knowledge. You have to have something important to to convey to people. Otherwise, they're not going to pay for it. But you also don't have to be the world's expert in something. And I think that that many people have a really perfectionistic view that if they are not the world's expert, then they say, well, obviously, I don't have anything to contribute, which is completely inaccurate. Sometimes people actually learn better from someone that is closer on the path to them as compared to somebody who's been an expert for 30 years and and doesn't doesn't even remember what it's like to be a beginner yeah. you know so if you could choose between taking running lessons from someone who's won five Olympic medals and somebody who's run a couple of marathons and has gotten into shape in the past few years, yeah. in many cases, it might actually be more relevant to you to take the lessons from somebody with a less experience mm. yeah. because they remember what it's like to, to be a beginner. And they're not going to be giving you these tips about, you know, oh, here's how you can shave a quarter of a second off your time. That doesn't matter. What you need to learn how to do is like finish the race. Race, not you know <laughs> not win the race in the beginning yeah. um, so I think that's that's one element the other thing is that even if you don't know exactly what your specific niche is going to be, mm. you probably have an area that you're interested in. Yeah. You know, it could be a big area. It could be cooking. It could be fashion. It could be business. That's okay. I mean, that that is too broad to really monetize, but it's a good starting place. And so something that I really suggest that people uh, think about mm. is cr- creating content and and you can create content early on by interviewing people that you respect. And that serves a couple of good purposes. Number one, it's a form of networking, right? Like we're hanging out here on, uh, on Skype. Yeah. But number two, it's a form of professional development that mm. allows you to keep learning enough to figure out, oh, th- you know, this is cool. This is kind of the area that I want to move toward. It becomes a kind of free education for yourself. Yeah. So that can be a way to begin to get yourself started. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, And for people who are watching this, by the way, Dory has a very specific course, uh, which actually helps you with, um, you know, your networking skills. And uh, I think you have another one which helps people with, with finding their niche. Is that right? 
Oh, you're you're so kind. Thank you. Yeah, I have I have different uh, different options that that are available. Um, sure. I think in a broad sense, what what you may be talking about, I have a, a course that I do, which is kind of my flagship course called yeah. Recognized Expert, mm. and it is about how uh, talented professionals can, in fact, uh, train themselves to become a recognized expert in their field. And if folks are interested, you can learn more on my website doryclark.com. Just click on courses, and that'll take you to the uh, to the right page. Uh, um, so, so that is uh, that is a place that that you can definitely check out. Absolutely, and if you're there, guys, make sure you actually uh, go and sign up to the free newsletter that uh, Dory actually sends to straight to your inbox, which is fantastic, and it's always full of massive, massive value. Um, I can vouch for that because I have personally signed up to that, so I can definitely vouch for that. And also the fact that. Uh, Dory, you also do strategy sessions, don't you? Like if somebody is not sure about how to find their niche, if somebody's not really sure about what direction they want to go in, they can actually go ahead and book a strategy session with you. Is that right? Uh, it's it's true. I, I do have uh, strategy sessions that I do with folks. Many of the people who uh, who sign up for them are certainly they they could use it to try to find their niche. Although oftentimes the people that I'm doing a half day strategy session for yeah. are a little bit further along. Typically, the place that they're at is that they know what they want to be known for, but they're not they're just not sure how to get there you know what what should what should they be doing that will get them the, the biggest ROI in yeah. terms of building their platform getting known maybe they want to build a consulting business maybe they want to get a book contract or start a speaking career they want to know what steps should they take in what order how do we figure out what the action plan is and that's what the the half day strategy session is for um, I'm actually doing one tomorrow as a matter of fact oh, I have uh, I have a guy who uh, is a um, he's actually a former FBI agent in the United wow. States and uh, he is transitioning into a consulting career. And so we're going to be uh, working together for a half day tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. But again, if, if folks are uh, interested in that, they can go to doryclark.com, my website, and um, just go under the coaching page, uh, click on that. You can get information about uh, about doing a half day session if that's your thing or longer term coaching if uh, if you want to learn about that. Fantastic. That's awesome. And uh, guys, I will highly encourage you to go and check that out as well, simply because, uh, like I said, Dory has worked with like thousands of people all over the world. He has delivered talks to, you know, uh, huge audiences consisting of people from all sorts of backgrounds and, uh, you know, business owners and entrepreneurs from all different fields and different levels. So I know that Dory will really specifically tailor the advice and the strategy to your needs. Uh, so if that is something that attracts you, then please go ahead uh, and I'll put the website actually below in the description of the video for you guys for easy access. Just hit the uh, link and it'll take you straight to the website and you can look at all that stuff and access all those things. Okay. Uh, Dory, thank you so much for that. Now, what, what impact do you hope to actually make with this new book of yours? Well, in writing Entrepreneurial You, really the, the problem that I, I wanted to solve was just it, it, it saddens me at a really fundamental level that there are so many talented people who have great ideas, mm -hmm. ideas that the world needs, and yet if they can't figure out how to make money from what they're doing, they're going to quit. Yeah. They have to quit. They need to support themselves somehow. They're gonna they're gonna take you know whatever random job they can get to to put food on the table, and that means those ideas essentially get lost. They get buried underneath the weight of all the things you have to do day to day. I would like to see those ideas out there. I feel like uh, we live in a world that could probably benefit from some more good ideas and from some more committed people who are out there espousing something that they are passionate about. And yeah. so I feel like if they have the tools to understand mm. how monetization actually happens these days, like yeah. what do you need to do? How do you build a successful business? How do you strategize about that? What are the specific steps and roadmap? I think that in many ways for me that the goal is to empower them to have a level playing field so that they can actually create a good business and share those ideas. Yeah, yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Fantastic. I uh, love that. Absolutely love that. And also the fact, uh, Dory, you have worked with like thousands of entrepreneurs. Uh, but the fact is for this book, you actually went ahead and interviewed some really, really successful entrepreneurs as well. So I'm, I'm just actually wondering, how would you define the entrepreneurial mindset? So the entrepreneurial mindset is something that I, I think 
is certainly is is a crucial ingredient if you are an entrepreneur. But I also like to argue that entrepreneurial thinking is a framework that even if you have a day job, you love your job, you want to keep it, is worth adopting and is worth um, exploring. And the way that I, I think of it really is an, an openness to testing things and experimenting. That, that's the idea, right? An entrepreneur is someone who looks for opportunity and says, oh, you know, maybe there's something here. Yeah. But the common perception about the myth about entrepreneurship is that it's a bunch of risk takers who are just like <laughs> diving in willy nilly, you know, oh, yeah. let's try this. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, of course, people think that entrepreneurship is risky if that's the impression of what's happening. Yeah. You know, who would want to be the person that's jumping out of the plane with no parachute and like, oh, maybe there's a swimming pool under here. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's it, not what good entrepreneurs do. What good entrepreneurs do is they spot an opportunity, but instead of going all in right at the outset, they do a little test. Mm. They, they, they stick a toe in the water. They experiment. They place a little bet, and that enables them to see, oh, is there momentum? Is there traction? Is there something here? And if there is, then they proceed. It's a very systematic uh, view of the world, and I think that more of us can adopt that, and it would benefit all of us. Awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm also actually wondering, Dory, you know, having worked with obviously so many different types of entrepreneurs, what do you think are the key factors that uh, or, or the key qualities that the successful entrepreneurs have or the practices that they have uh, versus the entrepreneurs who are not so successful or who actually end up, you know, uh, failing in their venture? Well, one story, Talal, that I tell in Entrepreneurial You is about a woman named Natalie Sisson. And I love her story because I feel like in many ways it is emblematic. Um, she today is a very successful entrepreneur. She lives in New Zealand. She makes you know quarter of a million plus per year, doing yeah. great. Yeah. But in the early days of her business, when she was first starting, I asked her, you know, what do you wish you knew? What do you wish you did differently? And she has a very ready answer, which is that she was spending a lot of her time, literally sometimes up to eight hours a day, online. Mm. She was, you know, I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't messing around. She wasn't, you know, she didn't think she was procrastinating. She thought she was doing valuable activities. She was, you know, engaging on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook. She was building her brand. She was yeah. building connections with people. Yeah. And those are, those are great things. Those are, those are all nice things. It's not like that's bad. But it's also not the highest and best use. Mm. It's uh, it's something that in many ways feels like work. It has the illusion of being work, but it's it's in many ways um, just sort of a, a a side thing. Because what you really need to focus on if you're an entrepreneur is you need to focus on building your list, building yeah. your email list, and you need to focus on getting clients, creating products, and getting clients and making sales. Anything yeah. else is just uh, you know it's like the cherry on top. And so she was essentially focusing on the wrong things. And she said she eventually realized it, but it took, it took her too long to do it. And so I think that understanding what the real metrics are is a key thing that we should keep in mind. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. That's a beautiful story. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. Like there's, it's so easy to engage in activity and think that you're being productive, but really you're just being busy. You're not being productive. Product productivity is which shows results. And if you're not getting results, you're not being productive. So I love that. Yeah. That's a beautiful story. Now, Dory, you um, obviously are a very successful entrepreneur yourself. You've built a very successful business for yourself. And I'm just wondering what are some of the key lessons you have learned uh, along the way that you can maybe share with, with the people here today that might actually benefit them? Definitely. So in terms of my own business and, and how it's evolved over time, I mean, one lesson that immediately comes to mind is understanding that that one of the the signature traits of being an entrepreneur is adaptability mm. and just taking stock of the circumstances around you and being willing to change when circumstances dictate that. So for instance, the original idea that I had for my business when I started it is that I actually thought that I would be a political consultant. That was that was sort of the first iteration wow. because I had I'd worked in politics before yeah. and I started my business and I thought, "Oh, well, I'll just do marketing and, you know, communications for political campaigns." But for whatever reason, I didn't get a lot of political clients 
up front. Like they just weren't coming in. And meanwhile, I actually managed to get a lot of inquiries from nonprofits or other organizations that were like, oh, you have a consulting business now? Can you help us? Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't an idiot. I'm like, oh, I'll take <laughs> I'll take the people with money. So yeah. I, I had to really recalibrate and be like, okay, I guess I won't be a political consultant. I guess I'll be a marketing consultant and then I can work for, you know, whoever is going to pay me. Um, and so that was that was a change that I had to adopt and embrace. But I think I think for all of us, your original business plan, your original business model may not work out quite the way you imagined. And so you need to, to be aware of that and be willing to shift into what is working. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so right. That's absolutely right. And at the moment, the economy, the global economy and the environment is constantly changing. So, you know, you have to be willing to adapt and and make sure that you are able to, you know, uh, keep up with the current trends, because otherwise you just kind of get lost in the ether and there's just too much noise out there, Uh, which actually uh, is a good transition to the next question that I wanted to ask you, which is the fact that there is a lot of information out there for people you know, who are business owners or aspiring entrepreneurs. Can you give us some advice on maybe how they can actually filter through the information and actually get to the core of the matter, get to the right information? Um, Because a lot of the time people do get lost in just, you know, having loads and loads of information available to them from all over the place, but they don't really know which advice to follow. What's the correct path? Yeah, that's an important question. So I would say that there's two key points that I want to make here. The first is about the timeliness of information, because I think part of the reason that people get overwhelmed is that they feel like they need to read everything, know everything, understand everything right that minute. Yeah. <laughs> and the, yeah. the, the truth is, of course, you, you don't uh, and you can't. And so it's useful instead to do a little bit of triage and prioritization And to think, well, okay, what is the thing that I want to do now? Like, you know, maybe you want to learn about Facebook ads and do them in 2018. Okay, great. That doesn't doesn't mean you have to, you know, buy the course, read the book, whatever, today. Maybe you start doing that at the beginning of 2018 instead. And you're you're able to pace yourself a little bit more. It's also going to have a lot more meaning if you're able to actually implement things as soon as you're reading about them rather than reading about it now and then implementing it in three months and saying, oh, you know, what was it again that I read? Oh, how do I do that? Um, So timing is one issue. The other is just finding your own trusted sources, right? And so I think that in a lot of ways, all you need is kind of a toehold in one place uh, because – yeah, there's there's a lot of people who have a lot of advice about entrepreneurship or anything else. Um, It can be hard to sort through that. I think that that really a good starting point is to find one voice that you like. It it could be somebody whose book you've read, maybe you've heard somebody on a podcast or or, read a blog, whatever it is, and you just say, you know what, this person resonates with me. I like their approach. They make sense. They seem smart. They seem honest, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And you say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to follow them. And you just, you know, for a while, you kind of put them on probation, quote unquote, you say, well, let's see, you know, over the next month, like, is this person still making sense? But if, if they are, if over time, they sort of prove themselves to be a reliable source, then oftentimes, uh, people are very interconnected. And so they might be recommending people, they might, you know, sort of steer you in certain directions, say, hey, my friend has this book, my friend has this course. And, you know, those things may or may not be right for you, because obviously, they're not a carbon copy of your person. But, you know, there might be enough overlap of approach or philosophy that they're at least worth looking at and saying, oh, well, you know, maybe that's worth checking out. And that way, you can begin to grow your tree and find other people that resonate as well. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. That's beautiful. Um, also, Dory, at the moment, you're, you're doing, uh, you know, quite a few, uh, you know, uh, talks and book launches to actually promote your new book. Uh, and you're going all over the place. So I know you're really, really busy. But do you find that when you actually go to these events and you, you know, talk about your book, etc., Is there like a common set of questions or maybe just one question that you get asked all the time by all the people who are present there? Yeah, you know, one question that I do hear a lot from people is actually about the courage to be an entrepreneur, <laughs> which which I think is is an interesting question. I mean, yeah. I 
I don't, I don't personally think of it that way, at least from my own experience, because when I started as an entrepreneur, the job that I had before that was being a nonprofit executive director, and I was making so little money. I, I didn't feel like it was like, oh, some courageous choice to be, uh, to be a, an, an entrepreneur. I actually felt like it was it was a smart, rational choice because I thought, wow, I I pretty much could do like almost nothing and still make way more money than I am making running this nonprofit. Yeah. Like I, 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 in my sleep, I, I am sure I could find a way to make more money than I am making at this nonprofit. And so it didn't feel like kind of crazy or risky, but I think to a lot of people, it really does. And yeah. that's one of the things that as we talk about it, we have to be aware of and acknowledge yeah. is that it, it means entrepreneurship means different things to different people. Mm. And part of what's holding people back is not, not necessarily as a lack of skills. It's not necessarily a lack of desire. Sometimes it's just a, a real uh, terror of, uh, of feeling like, Oh my gosh, I am abandoning the path that I knew, or I am abandoning what feels safe to me, even if maybe objectively it's not that safe. Cause of yeah. course we all know layoffs can happen, yeah. but it feels safe. And so there's a real, threat that comes with that. And so having to, to understand that there are psychological ramifications to doing this as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, early on, you mentioned that, you know, one of the things you wanted to kind of um, expose people to, uh, you know, by writing this book was the fact, you know, how they can actually go ahead and, you know, monetize their expertise and become an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm just actually curious, like, why did you, why did you feel kind of compelled to kind of solve that problem? Uh, you know, at the moment, obviously, entrepreneurs is quite entrepreneurial, uh, you know, kind of mindset and thinking and entrepreneurship itself is really big. Um, but I'm just wondering, what, what, what was the passion that kind of got you to go ahead and actually solve this problem? Oh, well, for sure. It was, it was wanting to solve the problem for myself, right? Uh, like, like a lot of authors, yeah. you, you write the book to, to answer the question. So, yeah. I mean, I, over the preceding decade, I had built a really good business. I mean, I, you know, I had a, you know, very good, you know, six figure robust business, yeah. but you look around and you hear these stories about, about people and they're, they're even people that like I know. And it's like, oh, this one made like $3 million from this launch. This one made like two and a half million dollars from the launch. And I'm like, yeah. Oh my God, how do they do that? <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And so I wanted, I wanted to understand like, what are they actually doing? What does this process look like? Yeah. And, uh, and, and I figured, you know what, this, you know, it's sort of obnoxious. You know, every entrepreneur gets this like, oh, can I pick your brain? Blah, blah, blah. You know, 75 people a week want to pick your brain and it gets really annoying. But I thought, you know what, I'd really like to learn from these successful colleagues that I have. Yeah. And, writing a book about it would be a great way for me to ask whatever questions I want, find, you know, be as probing as possible, find out what they're doing. I can learn it and then I can teach other people the the knowledge as well. And so throughout the, I interviewed people in the beginning of 2016. Yeah. And then throughout 2016, I worked on implementing all the things that I learned. And it was, uh, it was actually really great. I, I really did want to make myself my own first guinea pig in the book. And right. so I, I write about it uh, in Entrepreneurial U. It, it's, I'm certainly uh, capturing the best practices from all of these other entrepreneurs, but I also write about what I did to apply the techniques and what worked and what didn't. And so over the course of the year, I was actually able to add $193,000 to my bottom line wow. compared to the year before just from implementing what I had learned through these interviews. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. That's incredible. Yeah. Congratulations. That's amazing. That's a, uh, that's fantastic. Um, and yeah, people, if you are listening to this, then, uh, I would highly encourage you to go and grab a copy of the book. I know I'm itching to grab my, to get my paws on a, on a copy of the book. I'm going to tear through it. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, uh, because it's, it just, it just seems absolutely incredible. And, you know, the fact that you have put so much time and effort into solving this problem for obviously yourself, but for everybody else as well. I mean, it's not just the fact you kept the knowledge to yourself. You actually shared it with everybody else uh, as well. So, you know, it, it's, it's just so amazing. Um, and thank you so much for actually uh, kind of exposing all the rest of us to, to that uh, realm as well. Thank you. And I'll actually just mention quickly, Talal, um, even, even if you are in a place which 
um, Entrepreneurial U has not yet been released in. I do have a, a, hopefully that will be fixed soon and it will be available everywhere very soon. But B, I do have a free resource that anyone can get this minute, which is uh, the 88 question Entrepreneurial U self-assessment. Yeah. And it's a series of questions that actually walks people through how to start thinking about creating multiple income streams in their own business. And so for anyone who would like to get that for free, it's doryclark.com slash entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, no, that's absolutely right. You can download the free workbook, guys. Um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll put that link below in the description as well. So you can just hit that link, go there and download the book for yourself. Okay. Um, and again, um, I would just want to, you know, just say the fact that having this book available at this time would be fantastic because you might not know what you're capable of until you actually go through it, look through it and read about it. And then once you've read it, you'll have a much better understanding um, of what is it that you can possibly go ahead and accomplish uh, you know, in your life. So definitely go ahead and grab a copy of the book. I know I, I'm itching to grab a copy. I think it might be actually available on Kindle, but I want a hard copy because I like to like highlight things and take notes and, you know, um, go all nerdy on it. So I want a hard copy of the book, <laughs> but it's definitely available on Kindle if you want to download it. Right, Dory, I'm, um, you know, the fact that you, you went ahead and you interviewed some really, really successful entrepreneurs for this book, um, I'm wondering, what was your selection process like? Like, what, what was it that you're looking for in those people who you went and interviewed? Well, many of the people that I interviewed for Entrepreneurial U were people who either I knew and had a personal relationship with, or uh, they were just just out of my social circle, but I knew enough about them. And the, and the reason for that is that there were specific stories that I that I wanted to tell. There, there were things that I, I thought were just incredibly interesting little details, and I knew from knowing these folks in the online marketing and entrepreneurship community that they had cool things to share. So for instance, uh, Danny Eaney, who's a guy that I profiled, I had heard him talk, you know, for, from having known him, right. uh, you know, heard him maybe on some podcasts or whatever. I, I had heard him talk about his very disastrous first experience marketing an online course at wow. where he, he spent six months creating this course and one person ended up buying it. <laughs> and it was just like so tragic. And I thought that the lessons that he extracted from that process and then what he did differently as a result yeah. was really interesting and it's you know something that people could learn from and I thought oh you know that's that's good that's the kind of thing that I want to be able to to share with people yeah. so when I when I you know, I, I because I used to be a reporter, I have a little bit of a radar for these things and I file it away. And when I hear a really good story, I'm like, oh, that's something. And so I just would file away the stories yeah. and, and then think about who I wanted to uh, to follow up with. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Um, and um, I think kind of, you know, moving on from that, I know the fact that obviously, you know, you consult for lots of, uh, you know, big, big organizations and you work with lots of big clients, uh, et cetera, you know, big entrepreneurs, business owners. I'm wondering, you know, what are some of the, you know, kind of habits and routines and rituals that you have for yourself that allow you to con constantly perform at that peak level? Yeah, great, great question. I, um, I've I've definitely the last couple of days been pushing myself to try to perform it at the peak level, and uh, I, ha I have to say I'll, I'll I'll brag a little bit because I'm I'm kind of proud of myself. This uh, book launch period has been incredibly intense, and there are so many deadlines that have been coming up as a result of it. So I, I just got back last night from a multi-city book tour, and so I have uh, filming for a course that is taking place in California next week and i had to get the scripts done and i wow. promised them by you know mid midweek which is basically now and i thought oh my god how am i going to get this done I, I it was it was a huge amount and so i managed to write 14,000 words in the past two days wow. for the scripts. And I, I just finished it a little bit earlier. And so wow. I, I, I wasn't even sure I could do it, but yeah. I'm like, no, you have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I think the routines that enable me uh, to do that 
Certainly, it's it's getting enough sleep. Um, I, mm. I think that I I'm I'm not a fan of the oh I don't need sleep. Let's muscle <laughs> through it. Every every successful athlete that you talk about, like Olympic level athletes, the thing that they always say is that sleep is the most important part of their training mm. because they need it as the recovery time. Yeah, and so if you shortchange yourself on sleep everything else is just going downhill from there. You're going to be suboptimal at everything you try to do. And certainly if you're trying to write things, if you're trying yeah. to like do things that require extra cognitive capacity, it is not going to be there. So I, I will always give myself a generous amount of time to sleep, you know, certainly at least, you know, eight, you know, eight hours or, or se- you know, seven hours, maybe minimum. And I almost always, give myself enough time so that I can wake up before the alarm because yeah. it, it kind of sucks sometimes when the alarm goes off and you're in the middle of your sleep cycle and you're like, oh, no, not now. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think it's even better if you give yourself a margin and then you wake up naturally and can just be refreshed and get started. But So I, I think that's probably key. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, now, my next question uh, is a, a slightly different one to what we've been talking about. Um, if you had to walk away from everything that you're doing right now, what would you miss the most? Mm. I, I think it would, I would just say my friends because my personal life is very entwined with my business life. And some people have kind of like, I think, uh, in some, in some people or some cultures, there's a little bit of baggage around that. Like, oh, you know, keep your work and your and your personal life separate. I could not disagree more. I think that the people that I like the best, the people that I think are most interesting, yeah. are the people who are also passionate about books and about mm. entrepreneurship and about ideas. Yeah. Those are the people that I like. And and so I love to do business with friends. I mean, you know what? If someone's not good good to do business with, I'm sorry, they're not a good friend. <laughs> like, like you need, you want your friends to be ethical, smart, high quality people. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be friends with someone if I'm like, oh, well, you know, he's fun to hang out with, but I wouldn't do business with them. Like, that sounds like a, a kind of shady person. <laughs> so I, I, I think that, um, that, that would be the part that I would miss the most because I, I really, really enjoy the circle of friends that I have built. Fantastic. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, Okay. What I uh, want to just quickly do is give you an opportunity to just maybe um, talk about anything else that you want to mention and maybe we haven't covered in the interview yet. Sure, absolutely. Well, we've we've uh, certainly talked about my new book, Entrepreneurial You, and I mentioned the free uh, the free resource for that. One other thing that I developed earlier this year that I th- I think is personally kind of cool, and uh, so I'll mention it in case people are interested. This is another free resource. It's called the Recognized Expert Evaluation Toolkit, and oh, yeah. I spent a lot of time uh, developing this. It is basically a scored assessment that you can take that enables you to rank yourself on the pathway to becoming a recognized expert. And depending where you are and like what areas you're strong in or weak in, it actually helps prescribe a path for you about the areas that you should be focused more on. And so if people are interested in that, they can get it for free at doryclark.com, D-O-R-I-E-C-L-A-R-K.com slash toolkit. Awesome. And that's not just cool, guys. That is super cool because it's not just free, but it's just loaded with value. So definitely that uh, link will be going down in the description as well. Hit the link, go there, get it now. Awesome. Thank you, Dory. That was beautiful. I just like doing a quick fire round, um, you know, if that's okay with you. Sure. Awesome. Cool. So um, what are the top three to five books or podcasts that have had the biggest impact in your life? Oh boy. All right. So <laughs> I, uh, I would say biggest impact in my life. Well, I want to give a, sh- a shout out. This is really one of my favorite books of all time to influence by Robert Cialdini. Uh, it's a, g- a great classic book about, uh, the, the psychology of persuasion that made a big difference for me. Uh, another great business classic that, that I think every entrepreneur or small business owner ought to read is the E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, mm. which really helpful in terms of thinking about how to structure your business. Um, in terms of podcasts, one that I, I always turn to and, and enjoy, um, my friend James Altucher has a, a podcast just called The James Altucher Show. And he's really one of the finest interviewers that I know. I mean, he really 
it just draws people out in a nice way. Uh, I think that you know where podcasts can go wrong sometimes is where people they have this set of questions and they say, oh, blah, 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 question. And then the person <laughs> says something really fascinating and you want to hear more. And yeah. then the person's like, okay, question number two. And you're like, wait, wait, but what about that? And, yeah. and James is always willing to just like go with the flow and ask the question and follow the conversation where it's most interesting. So I think that um, that's a great one. And then if I were going to mention a, uh, a recent uh, book, I'll actually tell you uh, one, one that I'm reading right now is um, called The Four by Scott Galloway. I'm, right. And I'm, I'm really just in the middle of it right now, but it's very, it's very interesting for people who want to understand the modern economy. It's a book about um, the sort of four big tech players, Amazon, Apple, Google, and um, Microsoft. what else? Is it Microsoft? No. no. No, may, well, maybe. Anyway, okay. I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> anyway, we'll find out. We will find out. Uh, Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Facebook. There we go. Yeah, yeah. And, um, okay. Awesome. Yeah, anyway, it's it's very, very insightful about kind of macroeconomic trends. So I'm, I'm enjoying that one. Lovely. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Um, okay, next question. If you were deserted on a desert island for a whole year, which three people would you like to bring with you that are not your friends or family. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Who would I like to bring with me on the on the desert island? Yeah. Well, let's see. I you're going to need to be entertained in some way. So I uh, for two of my three, I'm picking Tegan and Sarah. They are a really great uh, kind of alternative folk pop rock band that i've just loved forever and awesome. so they're two they're these two twin sisters and so they can like harmonize and sing and keep me entertained on the island i think that would be really good no and then uh somebody else that would be amazing um who would be really interesting um I don't know, President Obama. He just seems so cool. He just seems like the coolest guy. I'd love to be his friend. <laughs> Lovely. I love that. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Um, now, in your opinion, what's more important, talent and skill or effort and grit? Oh, I think it's got it's got to be grit, right? <laughs> and, and Angela Duckworth has persuaded everyone. Oh, the yeah. gritty people win. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Have you read that book? Um, I haven't actually read it. Okay. I have, uh, I own it. Nice. <laughs> that counts, okay. right? It's, it's on like the list. Re reading by osmosis. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I would highly recommend it. I, I've, I personally read it quite recently and I, I was, I was just awestruck. It was, it's such a fantastic book. Um, nice. so yeah, I, I think you will really, really enjoy it. Yeah. I would Excellent. highly recommend that. Awesome. Well, Dory, thank you so much for being here. I'm really conscious of your time. I know you're really, really busy at this time uh, with everything else going on. So I just want to say, uh, you know, once again, thank you so much. It's a real honor. Like, seriously, it's a real honor for you, me to have you here um, and, and to have this interview because I'm a huge fan. And uh, obviously, you know, I would recommend everybody who's watching this to go ahead and check out Dory's stuff. Uh, I'll put all the links below in the description, but go to the website. I think that's the best place to go. Uh, Dory, what's the best place for uh, actually people to go and, and maybe get in touch if they want to? Yeah, folks, if folks want to get in touch, please feel free to drop me a line uh, through my website. We have a contact form. So just go to doryclark.com, hit the contact form, and you can shoot me a message. And uh, I, I appreciate it. No worries at all. And finally, is there anything that uh, I myself or, or the people who are watching this, is there anything that we can do for you right now? Anything we can help you with right now? Oh man! Well, I'm I, as as you mentioned, I am right in the thick of a book launch for entrepreneurial use. So if uh, if anyone finds the concept of the book interesting, now is a great time to buy it. <laughs> and uh, and just in general, I'm always grateful for help in in spreading the word or referring it to people that you think would like it. Awesome. So guys, I would highly encourage you to obviously go and check out uh, Dory Clark's stuff and all her uh, resources and websites, uh, etc. But also the fact, you know, please share, you know, this conversation that we're having right now. 
uh, with Dory and also share the resources that uh, Dory has mentioned. Maybe they will help somebody else. Maybe you know somebody who is, you know, kind of stuck in their life and not quite sure which way to go. They might benefit from one of Dory's courses. You might know somebody who is actually a little bit further ahead and, you know, they are trying to develop themselves and maybe they can help, you know, use the uh, one to one consultation meeting. Uh, maybe you maybe you just have a friend who's interested in becoming an entrepreneur and you can recommend, you know, Dory's books. So please go ahead and share all of these things because that's how you spread the awesomeness. That's how you actually spread the, the you know, great ideas, the grand ideas that are out there. And Dory has just dropped a massive amount of value on us, all of us. And uh, I just want to say again, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, as always, guys, you know, um, make sure you guys, uh, you know, leave below any comments on uh, also tell me what, what were your aha moments through this conversation? What were the light bulbs going off in your head as we were having this conversation with Dory? Uh, and if there are any more questions, maybe we can ask Dory in the next interview if Dory is willing to come back and see us. Absolutely. Thanks so much, guys. Okay. Right. Guys, stay happy and hustle hard. As always, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.